if you've got a thermal imaging camera, even easier, just get a thermal imaging camera on and, and try and find the warm fuse. So if your battery's going flat and it's not the battery that's the problem, you could have a, a parasitic drain or a parasitic draw, something that's staying switched on or an electrical problem, control unit problem, wiring problem even, something shorting out, drawing current and flattening the battery. They can be a real pain to try and find. Um, in the old days, we'd put an amp meter across it and, or disconnect the battery, put an amp meter across it and then start pulling fuses until it stopped. Um, but there's an easy way of doing it. We can test the, the current flow across the fuses, which means we don't have to power down any units. You don't have to go through all that recoding radios if you need to, um, all that malarkey. It's a couple of years ago, I, I got this van um, and after about four or five days, the battery wouldn't be enough to turn it over. Luckily enough for me, it was just a radio and it was even easier. It was a settings problem in the radio. This has got an MFD1 unit. So if you've got one of them, you'll know the unit I mean. Um, just change the setting on that and that sorted it out. It wouldn't, the radio wouldn't go to sleep, but it was enough after a few days to drain the battery. So let's have a quick look at testing fuses for current draw. Right, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to put it to sleep. We've got to make sure the car's asleep. Otherwise there's all sorts of control units body control modules, everything's going to be powered up, it's going to be drawing current, it'll give us an inaccurate reading, we won't find the problem. So to do that, we need to make the car think that it's all locked up. So it's quite simple, just go to the door, you're going to leave open, so on this one, I want the driver's door open, um, passenger door open, so I'll do the same thing there, I'll just throw that latch across, the car now thinks that door's shut. If you've got a door contact or a switch in there, you could disconnect that. Same as I want the bonnet up. So we do the same thing again. I'm literally going to push this down and lock that. So now it thinks the bonnet's shut. Now ignition's off. You can lock the car and it'll go to sleep. You want to give it a good hour before you start trying to do anything though. Otherwise there still could be some things awake. So we'll lock this and then just leave it. So I'll show you how this works and then I'll we'll go inside and I'll show you the chart. Basically switch your multimeter onto volts. Um, this one will auto find the range but you're looking for millivolts is what you're trying to get. Uh, can you see there? You can see that right. Now I'm going to show you on the interior light because it's an easy one that I can reach and switch on. So fuse number seven. Now if we measure, if you had a test light on this it would be live. But if we measure the two sides of this fuse should go down to zero. That goes down to zero. Now, if I, I'm going to try and hold these with one hand so I can reach up and switch the interior light on. There we go. Right. If I reach up, if I switch the interior light on, see that? We've got 11 millivolts. Switch it off, back on again. See, I can flick it on and off. So, if you find something that's on, 11 millivolts, we'll go to our chart and we'll see what the current draw of that is. Now the key to this method is this chart which you can download from Power Probe. Um, so well done to them guys. Because uh, this gives you all the answers you need to know. Most cars have got an acceptable current draw. So with the units that they need for like remote control, central locking, that kind of thing, security, there's a current draw involved. So on older cars, it was something like 50 milliamps, I think anything up to 85 milliamps and even higher on some cars. But you, you need to know what your, ideally you need to know what your, um, what the acceptable level is for your vehicle. But however, on ours just now, we had a 15 amp fuse. So the blue one, it's a standard fuse. So you can get the different sizes. We, we're using the standard chart, but you can get the mini, mini fuse charts. So if we look at, we had 12 millivolts. Well, this only goes up to 10. We knew it was going to be high because the interior light, leave the interior light on, that's going to flatten your battery, no problem. But if we go across here from 10 millivolts down to the blue, 2000 milliamps. So we're well over what the acceptable level is. So now what you've got is a process of elimination. We go through every fuse until we find one that's got current flowing across it and then keep going, make sure all the others are dead. Um, the downside of this is if you've got an intermittent current draw, for instance, a body, 
control module or electric module that's got a fault or you've had a water leak recently and caused damage to some wiring or caused damage to an electric module and it's intermittently powering up or powering on, um, you're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to try and find it by holding this on and, and giving it a couple of minutes. Um, you can whittle it down if you, like you say, if you've had a water leak or you suspect your wiper motor is continually trying to park. Um, if you've got a thermal imaging camera, even easier, just get a thermal imaging camera on and, and try and find the warm fuse. Um, but if not, you've just got to literally just hold it on and wait a couple of minutes. It's easier to be doing that than it is to be scratching your head trying to find out where's this problem coming from and then give it a reasonable amount of time, a few minutes, and then move on to the next one. Um, but at least you can try and whittle it down with, with this method. So you may have a couple of circuits that are live, but using this you can then work out if it's an acceptable draw, if you're within your, your tolerances as it were. Um, so that helps you diagnose that. But what I want to do, I want to play with this a little bit. I've made this little rig up using some LEDs. This may not draw enough current, but I just want to see if the readings, the end result is the same with a different fuse and a different, if you get a different millivolt reading. Right, so just as a another example, we've got a bit of a rough, and I say rough test rig here. We've got half a dozen LEDs connected to one of these fuses. We don't know which. So that's our current draw. It's permanently on, and it's say it's flattening our battery, or we think it possibly might be flattening the battery. So select millivolts. This one will auto adjust, and then. On each of these pins, we'll just hold it across. That's zero, nothing on there. Point 0.5 millivolts, so there's something going across that one. Zero, nothing on that one. Zero, nothing on that one again. So, the LEDs are on. If we pull the five amp fuse, LEDs are off. So that's our circuit that's given us our problem. Now it's only a five amp fuse and we're getting 0.5 millivolts. So if we then refer to our chart, five amp fuse, which is 10, 0.5 millivolts. So we're drawing 28 milliamps. So if our limit was 50 or on a modern vehicle, 85 milliamps would be okay. But what happens if we swap the fuses? So the, the LEDs are still connected to the same circuit, but now they're being powered by a seven and a half amp fuse. What does that do for our reading? Point three. So point three, if we refer to our chart, uh, it's a 15, 7.5 amp fuse, so brown, point three, 27. The 27 milliamps, that's pretty close. So it's fairly accurate. Um, whether it would be a bit more accurate if this was a bit more of a load, I'd say six LEDs, it's not an awful lot of current, but however, um, we can see that it's pretty close to the actual load compared to the size of fuse. So it's quite a good little little uh, little method to know this one. Um, it's a lot easier going through these with a with a multimeter and just checking like this rather than pulling the fuse, going check the ammeter, coming back, pulling another fuse, going check the ammeter. We can just do it in situ. Lovely, quite simple. Hope you like this one. Hope it helps you out. Have a look at my other stuff. I'll see you on the next one.